All right, everyone, welcome to another round of eight between the CSL ULAW Campus Series. My name is Joshua Fekes Quest. I am here with uh, somebody, actually, for the first time ever. I'm actually here with, uh, do you go by Brian? You go by Brian? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just call me Brian. That's good. I'm just going to call you Brian. That's good, apparently. So I'm here <laughs> with Brian, and uh, we are actually uh, showing Columbia College versus Chicago today. This might be the closest uh, seated match we've had so far. The number four seed, Columbia College versus the number five seed in Chicago. And uh, so far, I mean, Columbia College is one of the big four that everybody been talking about in the North. Chicago, they've been kind of going under the radar. They're still a good team, but they did lose two, uh, 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 they did lose one game to Cincinnati last week, uh, who, you know, Cincinnati was not really projected to win too much <laughs> or go too far in this tournament, but Chicago did prevail two to one, uh, but they're up against a very, very powerful Columbia College tonight, Brian. Yeah, Columbia looks really, really strong. Um, just from what we've seen, they've been a powerhouse. And then some of what we haven't seen in the CSL is them participating in the Midwestern Campus Clash, where they have been really dominant there as well. So they're kind of active in two tournaments, and they're dominating both pretty heavily from from both both sides, really. Yeah, it, and it, that's just one of the really, I mean, it's a really convenient thing about being in the Midwest right now. There are quite a few tournaments going on. Not to mention, of course, the Big Ten was also available to the uh, players over here. Uh, of course, those are already filled. So, of course, Columbia College, they made their own tournament and uh, opened it to everybody. It, is, it wasn't invitational for the Midwest. And yeah, well, Robin Morris University, they're also a part of that, who, by the way, the winner of this match will also go on to face Robert Morris University as a, I don't know if anybody watched the game a few hours ago, Robert Morris University, they almost lost, which I never thought I would say, but, uh, you know, brackets be damned, <laughs> uh, Grand, Grand Valley State University almost beat them. It even looked like they were going to, they went to a game number three. It actually looked like uh, Grand Valley State University was going to win that game. Um, but, you know, chance had it, some strategy prevailed for Robert Morris University, and they came out on top very narrowly, a lot more narrow than I think anybody would ever have called that game. But yeah. be as it may, the winner of today's match will go on to face Robert Morris University in the semifinals. Yeah, I mean, that was, that game was, man. Was you, you, man. Yeah, yeah, it was like one of those things I was not expecting it to go that way. Um you know, from what we've heard about Robert Morris, we've been singing their praises all season long across across the board, and they've been playing really well, but, I mean, who knows? And we'll actually get to see uh, how well one of these teams might do against them, depending on how they play against each other tonight. Yeah, that is going to be interesting. Um, so, yeah, like I said, Chicago, they did you know, drop a game last week, but um, obviously, I, I say that, you know, Robert Morris also dropped a game today, so... I, I think teams are allowed to drop a game as long as they come back in that third game and uh, bring out the W. I, I don't want to get too into Chicago losing a game last week because, again, um, not going to preach on it too much more from here on out because this is Columbia College versus Chicago. The focus is going to be primarily on them. But teams, they do get complacent. Something does happen. Sometimes it just doesn't click. Maybe we've seen that last week for Chicago. Columbia College, though, they have they've been looking phenomenal all the way around. So that is something that they have to worry about. Um, that Robert Morris University has to worry about. Uh, Chicago definitely has to worry about right now. Is that Columbia College? They've been on top of their game the entire series, and it doesn't look like they're going to be stopping. We do are under picks and bans right now, as we do see uh, Kazakhs and Eve taking off of the board by Columbia College. Meanwhile, University of Chicago, they're taking uh, out the Syndra and the Nami. Yeah. So the the Evelyn ban is actually a little bit surprising to me. That might be just a, a targeted ban at rec. The Syndra, Nami, Kha'Zix, Rengar, not surprising. Nami has been a very like favorable support um, as of recently. Um, she's kind of come a little bit more into meta as Zyra has kind of gotten her nerfs and fallen out of meta a little bit. Um, and then Kha'Zix and Rengar, obviously we know those guys are, right, are powerhouses uh, in the jungle. Rengar, even after his nerfs, is pretty scary. Syndra um, is always a good answer now that LeBlanc got picked up and put into the dumpster. So banning Syndra away is brilliant if you're trying to take away that high-pressure mid laner. And then Rumble 
has one of the highest win rates right now with 7-5. He's just ridiculously strong and has played a lot in the LCK. So banning him away makes a lot of sense as well. Yeah, which is interesting considering how popular uh, Edge of the Night has been for ADCs where you get, um, you know, the lethality, attack damage, and magic resist. It's been almost a mainstay on every, in, uh, every champion that uses AD. Uh, but you, then you see someone like Rumble who you know, doesn't really give a crap about that. He's <laughs> They're going to be picked anyways, and people still prevail on Rumble because he has such a team fight presence uh, that he can prevail no matter what the stipulation is or what the circumstances is, are, I should say, with uh, items or any sort of meta going around. But we do have a Graves locked in over for RJ on the side of Columbia College. And yeah, you were talking about uh, 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 targeted bands toward Rec. Every one of the bands on Columbia College were A, junglers, and B, stealth champions. That says a lot about Rex's play style, in my opinion. Yeah, I think it does as well. The Shin and Lulu pickup is really big. We've seen Lulu be very popular recently. Um, she's one of those other ones that have gotten picked up. Um, with Lucian coming back into meta a little bit with the, the changes that he had to his cast time in 7-5, um, Kyle and I were joking about this last night, but it's like the motorcycle and the sidecar. Like they just want to go fast, and they're gonna like gonna go at you, go at go fast at you really quickly to do a lot of damage. I like tripped over what I was trying to say, but I think I got my point across. <laughs> well, you totally did to me. I mean, I, I mean, the first thought that popped in my head was Batman and Robin, because you know back in the old sixty or you know, sixty show, that's how they traveled sometimes as in bat vehicle, bat cycle, and bat sidecar, because that's just how they roll. I don't really understand how it's not. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Adam West, Adam West's Batman was just a different story. But Lulu does make sense nowadays. You see so much uh, you know, uh, pressure on the bot lane. Have someone teleport down there, coordinate that with the jungler, you know, kill, make it a 4v2, 4v3, kill somebody, try to get the first move on you, on the enemy before that teleport comes in from the enemy. And uh, by that time, you can wipe somebody out already. I mean, Lulu is a great counter to that with the wild growth at level six. But over on Columbia College, we do have Karma uh, on Dean, Dean on Karma. And uh, let's talk about Artemis' Sivir. Artemis might be one of the best Sivir players in NA right now. He is also one of the few Art uh, Sivir players <laughs> in NA right now. Yeah. Which I mean, which which <clears throat> you know is say isn't really saying much as far as an ADC goes because he is pretty phenomenal on on uh, the Sivir. So him picking that pretty much shows me that they're ready for game number one. They just want to get this series over and on to the semifinals. Yeah, and I think Sivir fits really well into the. Oh, hang on. Looks like we are uh, having somebody drop out, maybe disconnect real fast. Um, I guess I will continue on with my thought as we try to work out what happened there real quickly. Um, I was just going to say that Sever fits really well into with the champions that they had so far. The, uh, the Karma and the Graves both are very in-your-face champions, I feel like. And so then using the Sever with the Karma, you can get a whole team speed up going. You can use her shields to engage relatively safely, and you can use uh, Sivir's ultimate to just run at people very, very quickly. Yeah, and it's going to be... Yeah, yeah. Graves, just in general, is just a huge powerhouse, and giving him mobility, is, and not to mention a shield, so he can just get in your face even more, and life steal through that shield, too. Uh, yeah, that's just a huge combination for Columbia College, but it looks like uh, we have a placement holder for that Caitlyn... Um, that was supposed to be a Twitch, I believe. Um, we're actually going to handle this one moment. We're being asked some questions here. And uh, I, I think we're going to, or unless you have something to say, we'll be back in just a moment. I'm going to be back in just a moment because I'm going to handle this because they're asking me questions. One moment. Yeah, I'm going to switch over to music. You guys hang tight for about uh, a minute or so, and we will be right back.
And with that, we are back into the picks and bans phases. Just a little bit of a, a technical issue coming up, but that has been resolved. So we are going to be hopping right back into the picks and bans. Um, all of the bands are going to be the same as long as well as the picks that had gone through leading up to that. Correct. So we're going to see the Graves. We're going to see the Karma. Also on the Artemis going with um, with the Severe. Janna being locked in as well. Actually, that was not Janna. That was last time. That was actually somebody else. And you see that they <laughs> that was supposed to be Lulu. And <laughs> so we are going to <laughs> remake that one more time, I believe. <laughs> and uh, they are apologizing. <laughs> Things happen. I mean, this is the round of eight. So, you know, nerves are high. Uh, fingers are getting a little bit twitchy. Sometimes the mind moves a little bit faster. And uh, sometimes the fingers can't keep up with it. So, yeah, um, it's, understand <laughs> it's understandable at this point. It's yeah, really, yeah, it's yeah. No yeah, it's nobody's fault. Like I said, nerves are starting to really kick in here. This is going on to the semifinals to face Robert Morris University, one of the biggest schools in the United States. Uh, in in a actually, if you want to uh, really encompass the entire North American branch, so um, I really I don't yeah I don't blame anybody here. It's a uh, it's uh, like I said very it's a uh, it's a very kind of you know touchy situation at the moment. Yeah, and it it does look like there wasn't. Um, we are having a little bit more uh, discussion about the about the technical error, um, so it might be just another minute uh, here still. So we are, we're we're gonna keep dealing with that. Uh, if you guys want to hang tight for another another minute or so, I apologize for the delay, and we will be right back.
Hey guys, just going to give you a quick update. We are dealing with a couple of technical issues still for one of the teams. We are going to be getting back into the game here very shortly, so please just hang tight. We are working it out, um, and I will come back with another update here very, very shortly. Thank you for sticking with us, and I look forward to casting this game with you all.
and with that we are hopping back into game it does look like things have gotten worked out so we are seeing the picks and bands coming out here relatively quick um, as we expected them to <clears throat> uh, so I am curious to see how the rest of the how the rest of these picks go down we do have the Lucian locked back in like we saw before we switched over the Sivir going over the graves going over oh. as well and the karma going over yeah and i'm of course i'm curious i'm curious too what's going to be locked in i mean the kaylin was locked in beforehand so this has to be it is going to be locked in ivern i believe was locked in too yeah kavar did go with the ivern last time so we still have the mid lane for university of chicago to be picked up here along with the top lane and mid lane which just locked in for columbia college that being Gangplank in the top lane and Ari in the mid lane for Columbia. And that actually is their entire team going down the line. That being Gangplank, the Graves in the jungle. Mid lane going to be Ari in the bot lane, Severe and Karma. Let's see what University of Chicago decides to pick to try to counter that mid lane or give themselves a little bit more team synergy here. Kassin would be an interesting pick. Haven't seen him in a while, but he is a pretty big powerhouse, a nice assassin. But you have to really work around him, especially in that laning phase. Yeah, that that's really big. Is he's pretty weak come uh, level, come level or before level six. I'm sorry, at level six he does have the ability to provide a little bit more pressure into that lane and do a lot more roaming. Um, if they do decide to go ahead and run with that Cassidy, um, no, they are gonna go ahead and lock in that Swain. So I'm not even gonna talk about the Cassidy pick anymore. <laughs> but now we can talk about Swain. So that's even more fun because he's in the mid lane. And uh, Swain is a sustained machine at once he hits level six. And you have to wonder how much an Ari burst is really going to affect Swain uh, whenever she does hit the, if, even if she lands the charm on level at level six, if uh, we baby Seamus can, you know, turn into his Raven form before that charm lands, he may be able to absorb most of that back and more, a lot of the damage back or at least mitigate a lot of it in order to prevent death. Yeah, and I think something that's uh, really big is he can put that crow out to, to put a slow down on Ari as well. Um, since Ari is so heavily reliant upon her mobility, um, using the crow in a tactful position can help her use one of the three charges that she has available on that ult. Um, and to using that, like forcing an Ari to use that defensively is actually a pretty big hit, especially early on. Um, so that actually is a, is a big thing to pay attention to is how well can uh, Seamus really use that crow to to at least force some defensive summoners out of Hollywood and how well can Rhett come in there and get into Hollywood's face to maybe provide some early like pre-6 pressure as well. Yeah, I'm very interested to see, but let's talk about the top lane a little bit. We do have a Gangplank into a Shin. Uh, of course, Shin has a lot of global presence, but so does Gangplank in a yeah. little bit different of a fashion. One, uh, Both of them, you know, coming through with the alts, but you know, one of them actually teleports you to your ally and gives them a shield which uh, I feel like is a little bit better than the cannon barrage that the Gangplank provides. I think it, it can and can't be, right? So I think I think both have a different type of global pressure. Shin is the global pressure like, I'm going to show up, keep someone alive, and then get into the middle of the enemy team. Gangplank is like, I'm not going to show up, but I'm going to do damage and provide harass while I still split push and force you to pay attention to me in the top lane. And I think that's the I think that's the difference between those two. Is like one wants to keep doing what he was doing before the team fight, and one wants to stop what he's doing to help his team win that team fight. Yeah, no, it's gonna it's gonna be interesting. I really I'm anxious to see how they both use their global presence in this game. Uh, but of course, we have to get into that game to see that one. My name is Joshua Fekas Quest. I'm here with Brian, just Brian, and I'm going <laughs> to give a shout out to our sponsors. Band Gaming, a social app and the primary social app for the CSL with uh, recent call functionality, not to mention boards, calendar functions, polls, chat. It's the premier social app for CSL, and we hope that it is a social app for you. Go join the CSL community at band.us slash at CStarLeague. And, of course, Twitch, nothing but gratitude for them. They've been with us forever. I mean, you're watching the ULL Campus Series on Twitch. If you're not, you're probably doing this illegally, which you should not be doing because Twitch is free, so just go watch it. And uh, you can watch us every, you know, Monday, Monday, uh, was it Monday, Friday, Saturdays, sometimes it's Sunday. Like, no, actually, every Sunday now because I'm there now. Yeah, I think um, it's like Monday, so yeah. Wednesday, Friday, Sunday. 
Saturday, yeah, Sunday. Much, uh, we'll just say every day, just for the <laughs> clarity's sake. Go watch Twitch yeah, every day. Right. And of course, Asus, they're back with us for the 2016-2017 season, uh, providing everything from graphics cards, motherboards, monitors, laptops, you name it, they're there. Don't enter your next battle unless you're equipped with Asus. Like me, I have two of their GPUs. They're fantastic. But my name is Joshua Fekes Quest here with Brian. We'll be back in just a moment. Stick around. Only fourteen ninety nine. Don't miss the call. Download Band. Communication made easy. Ben, Sam, and Ken are on separate journeys to defeat the menacing vile dragon. But let's just say luck isn't on their side. If only there was a way for them to find each other and band together. Well, that's why there's Band. It's a mobile app that allows people to come together using common interests. With Band, you can find fellow gamers, chat, schedule gaming sessions, and conduct polls. Stage epic battles with friends while sharing videos and photos along the way. So try Band today. Band. Be together. Ben, Sam, and Ken are on separate journeys to defeat the menacing vile dragon. But let's just say luck isn't on their side. If only there was a way for them to find each other and band together. Well, that's why there's Band. It's a mobile app that allows people to come together using common interests. With Band, you can find fellow gamers, chat, schedule gaming sessions, and conduct polls. Stage epic battles with friends while sharing videos and photos along the way. So try Band today. Band. Be together. All right, welcome back. We are on the rift between University of Chicago and Columbia College. As I say that, there's a pause coming now, so what the hell do I know? I'm just a color, a play-by-play. -play. <laughs> <laughs> That's, it's not your fault. Uh, there, we are waiting to load in. The pause time did come out. Um, like, we were almost on time, actually. I was like, man, we're gonna nail this timing. Spinny Baron coming out, let's go, load onto the rift. <laughs> yeah, I know. And then it was like, ah, pause time, got him. I think that was actually part of the reason why it took us a little bit longer to get into game today. Is I, uh, I think the pause time had to do with somebody having a little bit of a problem connection, uh, the, the, a little bit of a connection problem getting connected to the game. 
Um, so we're gonna wait and, and see how this one rolls out. Uh, while we are waiting for the pause time to be resolved, I'm gonna go ahead and run down the side of Columbia College, who they are, what champions they're playing, and maybe what some of the emerging storylines are in this game after we go ahead and introduce the side of Chicago. So for He's Columbia sad. College, we have CC Misty Stumpy in that top lane with Gangplank. We have RJ as Graves in the jungle, Hollywood as Ari in the mid lane, Artemis playing that Sivir in the ADC role, and Dean taking that Karma as the support. Fekas, you want to take away Chicago? Of course, there is the top lane. Studio is going to be on the Shin. Wreck going on Ivern, who doesn't really wreck people. He is very gentle, but we'll see how Wreck <laughs> plays him. We Baby Sheamus on the ravenous flock of Swain, Kvar on Caitlyn, and the Tank Man on Lulu. Who, uh, like I said, I feel like Lulu is going to be a huge factor in that bot lane because, uh, yeah, the big focus is on the bot lane nowadays. You do just you just completely um, uh, four to five man gank that. I rarely see three man ganks anymore that actually are 100% successful. You usually see four to five, especially with you know the global presence of the top lane, not the Shin and a gangplank here. You're more likely going to see five man ganks in that bot lane uh, for the least. Um, and then they rotate over to Dragon or take the first turret, grab themselves an extraordinary amount of, uh, I guess, burst gold, if you want to go that far about it. And uh, yeah, and then I think Lulu, Wild Growth at level six, I'm going to try to prevent a lot of that one. But speaking of prevention, we have a grouping, grouping coming out from Chicago. I want to be preventing a, uh, a red invade here in Columbia College. They are going to spot him out. They walk forward, they throw the Q, and they get a hit. They walk forward anyways. First blood goes over to Wreck on Chicago. Yeah, wow, that was uh, that was actually really big. Um, even using CC Dean to scout it out with that Karma Q, and they found out that someone is the bush. They were too close already because Rec went ahead and leveled up his uh, root first. So there was really no saving CC Dean because he did level up that Q first. He couldn't shield himself. There wasn't a whole lot he could do. And with four of the five members of Chicago there to apply pressure, I, I mean, very well done. Good setup by Chicago to get that early first blood kill and putting that onto Ivern's not awful actually. No, not at all. And you want to get a jungler going as much as possible because they're probably one of the most influential uh, champions on the map. So, or at least the influential roles on the map. So yeah, very, very good position for uh, Chicago early on. Artemis is going to be spotted out there. Dean, like I said, threw his Q out, so it actually hit somebody. Maybe thought he maybe just might have hit only one champion. Um, but he actually hit about five of them. <laughs> surprise. <laughs> yeah, surprise. He walked into them. And uh, yeah, First Blood did go over to the Ivern. Everyone picked up a uh, an assist except for Kavar. But that is still going to be some global XP and uh, a little bit of gold. I believe it's only 25, 40. It's, it's a very small amount early on. So it's going to be negligible, but still going to make a difference. Artemis, though, getting poked down quite a bit between Kavar and uh, the tank man, he has to be very careful. He has three of those uh, biscuits in his arsenal, already eating one of them, but he's not gonna have those too much longer. Dean doesn't have any sustain for him to really keep himself uh, healthy. Yeah. He does have a field, but you have to throw it on him first. Right, and I think the big thing is that they weren't level two yet, and so they kept trying to, um, the side of Columbia, they kept trying to fight in that bot lane to make something happen, and they just weren't able to do it because they weren't level two yet, so. Dean didn't have the shield to help keep Artemis safe, whereas Kavar did have uh, the Lulu to provide extra damage and harass, which at level 1, that Glitter Lands is still no joke. Um, it does do a fair bit of damage, and without the help of a shield to, to help keep Artemis alive, he ate it pretty heavily. Yeah, and hold on, we do have RJ in the top lane, but Studios is just going to dash out of there with his taunt. He's going to be very fine here. And you were talking about the Glitter Lance being powerful. The thing, I think it's going to really underestimate it here, too, that uh, her passive, Lulu's passive, is actually kind of powerful, too. Throwing on those little uh, pixies onto you as well. Yeah. Uh, the the follow-up magic damage, it does add up quite a bit. And that was also contributing to Artemis being uh, chunked out there as well. But we're going to see. He's already full health. He only has one biscuit left. But, of course, with Kavar starting the Doran's, uh, Doran's Blade, I should say, they actually are on par as far as uh, biscuits go. But now Doran's blade does give him a little bit of a advantage in regards to sustain and health. Yeah, I think so. But I think it depends on what build Artemis wants to go for as well. Um, we did see lethality fall out of flavor a little bit from uh, the seven four mid patch and the seven five patch. 
um, nerfing both Yomu's and um, Edge of Night, which are the two primary primary lethality items that people are building in this meta. Um, so having that taken away is uh, having that extra damage taken away kind of takes away the ability to start with that long sword three biscuit a little bit. Yeah, I mean, I mean, it's still it's still decently powerful though. I haven't right. seen it on Sivir. The yeah, guy, I haven't seen a Sivir in so long. Artemis is the only one in Collegiate play I feel like plays her. <laughs> so I'm actually not sure how it works on uh, on a on a Sivir. Yeah, I mean, typically Sivir actually I feel like would benefit from at least the active of Yomu's for sure, and the benefit of Straight Dark. Hang on, here comes RJ. He's probably gonna die oh, here to wreck though. RJ, he is going to go down pretty fast. Actually, he gets he actually flashes. Wreck did not flash in the proper direction, but now he's gonna be cut off by Lee Baby Sheamus. And I feel like maybe RJ might have been able to uh, get away from Lee Baby Sheamus, but of course he does have the flash. So no matter what, it has it is another kill over onto Wreck. Meanwhile, in the mid lane, Hollywood he gets rooted down by Lee Baby Sheamus's never move. That is going to be a little bit chunking going over to Hollywood, but he still has that biscuit. And actually, Ari, one of those ADC or uh, AP champions in the mid lane, that actually does have a sustain in her passive. Yeah, I think that is going to be. Uh... Ah, uh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I, I like, listened to what you said and I had something to say back and then I just kind of forgot for a second. Ah, uh, it's okay. I forget about a lot of things too, man. Don't worry. But, um, so but something... We... Yeah, go for it. I was going to say something that I did forget to mention is that, um, obviously Longsword can be built out of more than just your, like, you can't, you can use it for more than just, like, Yomu's. Obviously, like, Yomu's and the, uh, um, Edge of Night. Um, we've just been seeing that a lot more, so that's the first thing that came to mind. But uh, as, as was pointed out, it can be used for a lot of a lot of other items. It can go into pretty much anything that a longsword goes into, essence reaver, uh, things like that. So that is that is a viable start path for Artemis as well there. And if he yeah, I mean yeah, go on yeah. I was just gonna say he's been spamming the abilities a lot, so the essence reaver would definitely fit him fit him in there as well. Yeah, we see that with Ash as well, uh, essence reaver is a, a good start on Ash, but yeah, I mean, it, does, it does make sense on a Severe, and yeah, like again, like I said, I think Artemis might be the only person in Collegiate play to actually play a Severe. Maybe even, uh, I w I'm not going to say uh, in the world as a competitive player, the only one to play a Severe, because I'm sure somewhere out there, somebody's earning money playing Severe right now. Um, but the point is, that we don't get to see her that often, so um, yeah, try to get used to what she's gonna build is, uh, or you know, what he's gonna build as Artemis is actually a, you know, somewhat difficult. Kind of to play by ear, but it has a bit more play by eyes as we see the uh, BF sword being uh, picked up by Artemis, which pretty much all guarantees he's going for that essence retriever. Yeah, and I think that I mean that's a great pickup. 53 CS already. Um, Kate is a little bit far out of lane, so Kavar might be a little bit behind in CS, um, and they should. They should probably hit level 6 about the same time because Kavar did stay behind a little bit longer than Artemis did to pick up a little bit more. Um, but that BF sword early on is going to be doing a lot of damage for Artemis, and he's going to be benefiting from that a lot. Yeah, Kavar is actually answering back, though, with a BF sword of his own. So more likely going to Infinity Edge with that one as Kate you know, does benefit quite a bit from the extra crit damage and just the overall poke damage in the first place. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That being the longest range ADC, yeah. Okay. Yes, definitely with that as well. And I think the one thing that I find interesting is that while we you touched on uh, Caitlyn being the longest range ADC, we haven't seen a lot of great um, um, trap control coming out of uh, Kvar either. Because um, one of the big things about uh, Caitlyn is being able to use those traps to, to set them up, get headshots, and then reset using the, the 30 caliber net to get another headshot, right? Using using the traps to set up, and, and we just haven't seen him put down a lot of those traps even at level six. Yeah, and that is interesting. But the thing is that Artemis can just you know obviously use a spell shield on those traps and just gain mana back. And you're, I think he wants to. You know he sees Artemis spamming out as much as possible. Sees that he want, is going low on uh, on mana, so I think he just wants to keep that from happening. Just wants to keep that mana bar in check. Make sure you can run out of mana spamming. As uh, we do see Artemis, he's completely out of sustain right now. He's very low on mana. So, I mean, so far it's actually working, but uh, that's only in regards to health bars right now. I mean, it's going to be determined more by a gank because the CS is actually a pretty even. Kavar is just a little bit up, but it's negligible at this point. There hasn't been too much pressure coming out from RJ, especially since he died early on. And uh, Rec now has two of the kills. It's actually put him quite a bit ahead in the uh, item position as well. So he already has an Aegis of the Legion, so 
I'm surprised we haven't seen Wreck come out with more ganks, uh, considering he's pretty far ahead right now of RJ. Yeah, I think uh, Wreck is just playing it safe. He did just hit level 6 to have that Daisy, which is really, really big in terms of gank potential. Um, it provides a lot of disruption, and actually it looks like he might be on RJ here again. Yeah, RJ is just finding himself in the wrong place at the wrong time a couple of times this, this game. He's going to try to dash over the wall, and he does. Cloud Drake has been started up by University of Chicago, possibly inadvertently, but it is being started up nonetheless, and those brushes are actually going to make him invisible, so they can't have a... Uh, it's harder to, sm to smite steal. Uh, if you're RJ right now, if the dragon is inside the bush, you can't get an idea of how much health he has. We see that happening right there. RJ didn't even go for it. He knew better. And the first dragon of the game goes over to University of Chicago. Yeah. And that was a, uh, a really, I wouldn't say like purposeful setup, but it was very convenient. And if they did that on purpose, very well done uh, by the side of University of Chicago. Um, that's just Wreck knowing where to be. Like he wanted to be on that bot side to apply pressure. And it just happened that RJ was there at the same time. And being able to, with RJ being so far behind, they were able to apply a lot of pressure and then go ahead and get out. So I think that's a uh, pretty, Pretty uh, cool, if if I do say so. Like they, they did a good job of playing around that, and that was good jungle sense by Rec. Yeah, and we're gonna—he's been doing very well on jungle this entire game. I'm actually very surprised that he's been able to have his uh, have his way with RJ uh, as easily as he's been able to. But as we see more action just in the bot lane, the camera loves the bot lane as Artemis went back to pick up Caulfield's Warhammer. One more component left for that uh, for that Essence Reaver. It's going to be complete probably on the next back, and he will be able to spam out even more on those uh, boomerang blades, bouncing blades, all sorts of blades in the bot lane. But Ivern Wreck, he just finished his lock of the Iron Solari, so when he ganks, he's actually in it if he gets counter gank. That's especially important. Yeah. He's, he's going to have a lot of uh, effective health, those shields. Definitely, and I think something else to note is that... Um... He does have, um, typically we do see Ivern's build that redemption item because it boosts the amount of shielding that you, uh, that you do. Um, and so that, that works very well with the um, Aegis. So doing those two items together is very good. And that's especially strong on Ivern because he does build that AP and he's a little bit more of a, a support really than a damage dealer. Yeah, we typically see him build the redemption, but he is on the in the bot lane right now. Kavar is going to blow his uh, heal to get out of the way along with the flash here, but now Artemis may be in trouble as well. Same guy coming out. There is Studios teleporting himself into the bot lane. Lands a tart onto Artemis. Studios picking up that kill, and now Dean is also in the bot lane. It is a 5v4 right now as Kavar picks up another, actually, another kill for University of Chicago. There is the Cannon Barrage coming out from the top lane as Misty Stumpy decided not to use his teleport, going to stay into that top lane area. There is no dragon to pick up right now, so as long as Columbia College can wave clear in the bot lane, they can protect their objectives right now. But damage done on that top lane turret, but on the other side, University of Chicago, they just got themselves a four kill lead with those two kills added to their already previous two. Yeah, and I think, I think that kind of reflects what we were talking about in champ selection, right? Like, Shin wants to be in the middle of the enemy team and help you win team fights, but Gangplank wants to stay where he is and push objectives and remind you that he's there. Um, I think my biggest critique out of that team fight is Misty Stumpy did wait a little bit before he used that ultimate. He waited until most of his team was dead uh, before he went ahead and used it. He did have it earlier, um, so I think if he had used it a little bit sooner, it would have deferred Chicago from at least going as deep under the tower as they did. Um, and maybe kept a couple of members from Columbus alive a little bit longer. Yeah, it's going to be difficult for Col uh, Columbia University to really combat all of this uh, effective health and the all the, the life stealer or um, spell vamp that University of Chicago has. They have Stand United. They have uh, you know Ivern with the uh, well, not to mention Daisy, but also Trigger Seed. Um, you know, of course, we do have Wee Baby Seamus on the. Um, Swain, I almost forgot his name for a minute. Turning himself into a, turning himself into a ravenous flock, so he's able to stay alive very well. Also, but again, you also have the tank man, and we're gonna see another gank in the bot lane. They can tower dive this so well because they have so much in the way of shields. Very clean kill by Kavar onto Artemis. That was very very good pickup. Now we and Seamus might be finding himself in a bad situation, but again, he just heals everything back up. Hollywood has to use Spirit Rush defensively. 
Yeah, and that's exactly what I was talking about as well. I think a lot of this matchup depends on whether or not Hollywood is having to use that spirit rush in a defensive manner. I mean, that is going to really dictate how some of these fights are going to go. If Hollywood's not able to get in somebody's face with that, and he's actually having to use that to run out of people's faces, that's going to cause a, a lot of problems for the side of, of Columbia. Or, yeah, of Columbia, because they're trying to do some stuff, and it's not really working. Oh, so far... It's not quite working, but they are four strong in the bot lane. They are looking for a tower right now, possibly the first tower of the game, and it does go over to Columbia College. Again, a barrage coming down. That means RJ is going to go forward and take advantage of the slow that it provides, but not enough damage to be provided under this one. Kavar makes it out just fine. Does have the tank man there with the shields as well. So that is going to be first uh, first turn of the game going over to Columbia College, and it closes that gold gap right now. But so far, these team fights still looking in the favor of uh, University of Chicago. The next dragon will be up in 40 seconds, and that's going to be another Cloud Drake. Yeah, I mean, that's uh, that actually is a really good one to take away from the from the side of CC. Um, them not having that is actually gonna be pretty big, just because, like we talked about earlier, uh, the team comp that they do have really wants to run at you. Hollywood wants to run at you. Misty wants to run at you. Like, Artemis has a skill that's purposely used to run at the enemy. I mean, so taking away more movement away from them is, is very big, and I think that helps them a lot. Yeah, very much so. And we're gonna see how much that really helps them out. But right now, the dragon is up. Artemis and Dean, they are not in a position to help out their team right now for this dragon. Nice ward coverage with the pink wards. Make sure they are completely alone up in that top lane. They know that uh, University of Chicago, they are going to be focusing on that dragon toward the bot side area. A lot of deep wards coming out and pinks at that. Or no, I shouldn't say pinks, sorry, not pink wards, control wards. We're not in the last season. <laughs> so last season, Brian. But that is going to be another turret picked up for uh, Columbia College. They uh, try to keep this gold gap in their favor. It's uh, still about 1K gold lead in favor of University of Chicago. Yeah. Dragon yeah. not quite uh, started. What are we looking here? Yeah, I would say once they take this dragon, um, Chicago is going to be in an interesting place. They don't have any of their lanes pushed because the wave control of Columbia is so good. You see top lane pushing in, mid lane is pushing in against Chicago. So the, the waves are not in favor of Chicago, even though they're kind of winning the neutral objective game, they're not doing so great on the macro game, right? Uh, no, no, not yet. They are, aren't there. So they're kind of falling out on that one. Uh, as the second Cloud Drake goes over to University of Chicago, and they say the Cloud Drake is the, I want to say the most useless. I don't want to, I don't like using the term useless because any stat added is good, but it's not the preferred dragon that uh, teams want to have. But when you start stacking that up, it actually becomes very valuable. You have two Cloud Drakes on your side right now. Um, that automatically, that, that empowers you by 50 movement speed. That allows you to get around the map so much faster. Yeah. But the next one is going to be the Infernal Drake, and that is going to be, I feel, like a big point of contention for both teams. I think both teams, especially Columbia College, the position they're in, definitely want that Drake. I think so as well. Um, because at this point in the game, both teams are getting to about their completed second item, or at least their damage item, um, for both of, for their damage dealers. Um, that the Infernal Drake is really, really good because around that like, damage item is really where we start to see the damage start to scale up. Not that um, Speaking of being useful, oh, Artemis does dodge the never move, and now Dean is in the mid lane to you know, back up his fellow ADC. But, yeah, man, we well, Seamus. He's getting scary. I mean, he has, does have no he has no kills, but he also has no deaths. He has two assists right now. He's stacking up that Rod of Ages. He can uh, he can probably 1v1 almost anyone on this map right now, if not anyone. I would say I said almost because I again I don't like I don't like dealing in 100% certainties, but I have, a, I have pretty good confidence that Wee Baby Sheamus on this Swain right now can duel anybody who wants to. But it's gonna be hard because it's, it's that's the thing is that with you having Shin here, you're not really dueling anyone 1v1, and you always have that ace in the hole stand united coming out for you if you're on the Columbia College. Yeah, I think so as well. And Mr. Stumpy is taking a bit of harass here under his own turret from the studio. Oh, yeah, he, he died. He's going to actually flash out of the way of this one. Stumpy he does keep the orange. He's not going to be dead this time around. But there is a fight coming out in the top side jungle. 
A lot of health bars going low. Artemis, he's almost... He needs to finish himself a little bit better, but he is going to stay fine. But it looks like Daisy is not done with anyone yet. He's going to chase down whoever he can. RJ has to get a Flash Force out on there. Stand United coming out. A little bit uh, too late, but... That is actually looks like a pretty huge because that's going to be a big uh, team fight presence down. The studios could have saved, but he doesn't may. Looks like there is going to be pressure in this mid lane from University of Chicago. They may be able to take this mid lane turret right now. Artemis needs to be careful as he is going to be chunked down by that Raven from Wee Baby Sheamus. And uh, one more wave should do it here, Brian. Yeah, I think so. Uh, that, that next wave, if if chicago is able to take this turret they will push their head uh their lead ahead by about uh another uh i think it's like a thousand gold per tower um so that'll be really good to have if you're chicago um you want to you want to maintain that that neutral game at least in terms of being even like on the macro play right they're ahead in the breaks, they will probably be setting up here shortly for the Infernal. Um, and then getting this next tower would be really big for them because that provides them a lot of pressure and, and a little bit more freedom to move around on the map. At least they'll have the top side uh, tier ones clear so that we'll have a little bit more movement around that Baron Pit to help set up and make sure that uh, Columbia can't do anything a little bit sneaky. Yeah, as Baron did just come up, we saw the message as the Rift Herald decided to go back to the Void and bring forth its bigger counterpart, the Baron Nasher. Dean not able to clear up these wards like he wants to, as Wrecked. Uh, Wreck is actually a big force right now. Level 10 has the Redemption already built, so that is going to be a big factor. Just another uh, factor in these heals that are coming out for University of Chicago. Mitzi Stumpy not not quite hitting those uh those barrels there. Dragon will be up in one minute and forty seconds. Mid lane turret is still standing for uh, Columbia College. Here comes an engage spirit rush. Uh, up with the uh, engage here. Flash being blown by Rep. He finally goes down. Artemis picking up the kill, putting Columbia College on the board for the first time in this game at twenty one minutes. A little bit of unusual turn for them as they, they're usually the ones dictating the pace of the game by this point. But right now they're not. Just trying to pick out who they can. The gold is still pretty even, though, especially with that pick onto Wreck. Very nicely played by Columbia College, but they're still going to have to back off here and defend their turrets. Yeah, and I think that I think that speaks a little bit to what we were talking about, right? Like Chicago hasn't had great control over the macro game, so that has allowed Columbia to stay even in gold, right? Like they're doing well in CS. Like Rays is 40 CS up on that Ivern and. I mean, that's that's quite a big differential, and then they're ahead by a turret as well, and they're applying a lot of pressure to all of the lanes, so I think Columbia is doing a good job of, while they're not doing great in terms of kills or in securing breaks, they're doing a good job in terms of pushing down the towers and providing pressure across the map where they need to so they don't fall behind. You know, it's, uh, they're doing the best they can at this point in the game. I mean, like, any... Many team against Columbia College who's doing this well this early on, um, it, that's that's a phenomenal note to them. Because like I said, I mean, they're a great college, they're a great school. They have a great training facility uh, in their uh, in their arsenal uh, on their arsenal to use. And um, right now, like I said, gold is still even, and I'm very surprised at that one. But it's because of the gold, uh, the uh, slight pick that they got, and also of course the uh, second tower that they have. Like you said, it does add about a thousand gold. But one thing they don't have right now is the Dragon. The uh, Infernal Drake is up at the moment. And it looks like they know that University of Chicago is going to go for it. And that is going to prompt them to rush, try to rush down this Baron. This is a very risky play. Studios is there. That might prompt them to try to pick, get a pick on the Studios, who is extremely tanky. Flashes over the wall. He's going to be safe. And now Never Move going to zone everyone off. And that was Columbia College just being out-rotated by University of Chicago. Very great job by them. Yeah, and I think that kind of goes back to us saying that uh, Columbia College is going to try to be sneaky and try to make something happen. Um, luckily, uh, Chicago doesn't need everyone in that bot lane to try to take that take that Infernal Drake away. Um, so having Ghibli Studio there in the top lane doing the split push and having him available to go scope out the, uh, the Baron is huge. Um, and that actually prevented something very bad from happening uh, against Chicago. 
Yeah, but at the same time, it also you know, encouraged something very bad to happen against Columbia College. Now, they, they still have zero Drakes, and now the Infernal Drake is added onto University of Chicago. The next Drake is also going to be the Infernal Drake. I would think they would want to stop that at all costs, but their priorities seem to be a little bit skewed here. The turret in the mid lane does go down. University of Chicago finally gets that one. A lot of shields coming out. Stan United as well coming out for Studios. He makes his way into the mix, but Stumpy does take down Rick. It's Andrew back. Hollywood going down, as does Stumpy and Artemis. So that is a double kill for Kavar. And this is a great team fight by University of Chicago. Started what it looked like may have been a pick from a uh, by Columbia College. Turned around. They were not able to take out who they needed to before Stan United come in, and now they may be able to pick up this inner mid lane turret. Yeah, and I think I think they will get this turret, and that will actually push them ahead by a turret and giving them about a two and a half k gold lead. That is very very good for Chicago. Um, it will give them the opportunity to go through that top side jungle of Columbia to apply some wards, get some vision down, make sure they understand where Columbia is, and it'll allow them to set up a little bit better for any other macro type play and movements that they want to set up around the map yeah i mean the map is essentially in control by university of chicago they have everything they want in this game at the moment every drake they have three turrets against the two of columbia college they have four times the amount of kills right now not does it doesn't sound like much but against columbia college that is quite a bit so they are in control of this game. They have taken ahead of the uh, uh, taken ahead in the gold lead as well by about two k, and one point five. You really want to get technical about that? <laughs> just <laughs> or, just enough or, to be important, right? Yeah, and I actually did the math wrong on that too. It's actually two point five. <laughs> but <laughs> so I'm not important at all. I'm terrible at math. I actually did well in math in school, but it was one of those things I dreaded doing unless it was physics based. But this is not physics based. It's purely a uh, statistics based and data data collecting which i am horrible at as you can tell i can't even do solid basic math right without <laughs> judging what can be you know what's falling from gravity or anything like that we'll get to that another time when i'm <laughs> in, my, in my tell all memoirs but <laughs> do have a lot of pressure coming out from university of chicago they have uh you know, there's a lot of vision being established around this baron you'd have to think ash chicago that's the goal you want right now that's the big objective that you want in Columbia College, they know that. They want to clear as many wards as possible. So you see Artemis throwing down, or not Artemis, I'm sorry, Hollywood throwing down a control ward, clearing out as much as, they, uh, as he can down uh, up in that barren area. But right now, Stand United is up, so Studios, like he's been doing this entire game, can just kind of split push and be with his team all at the same time. Because with how many shields and heals are coming out, I mean, he doesn't have to worry about his target dying. He's going to stay alive. He's going to get into the mix of things. Yeah, I mean, they have they have the Lulu shield, they have the Ivern shield, and then they have, like, the Shen shield. I mean, so many shields on top of Lulu's ultimate with rapid growth. I mean, there's and just... And redemption now. Yeah, there's just... And he's all, and he also has that uh, the item that kind of got reworked a little bit as well. Knight's Vow is a Ooh. very good item now, too. Yeah. Yeah, so a lot in the arsenal of University of Chicago to just make sure they don't die. And so far, it's worked out. Now, of course, Columbia College, they do have quite a big scaling team. We, as, as we've seen whenever, uh, you know, Severe was in the meta. Very big scaling team. Of course, RJ on Graves. We all know how much he scales. But there is a little bit of a catch trying to be happening here. RJ, wrong place here. Tries to ult over the wall of collateral damage. Does not work out. Has the, Kavar, uh, has the health bar of Kavar. But still goes down, and that is that may be Baron going over to University of Chicago with no one able to steal away. Yeah, I think a lot of this is going to depend on how confident University of Chicago is in their team fight. Um, we have seen them do very well in the team fights with all the shields that are coming out from the side of Chicago to help basically just survive through the burst damage that Hollywood and and Sivir are able to put out with that boomerang bang, uh, boomerang blade and the ultimates and things like that. And with Baron being started, it sounds like they are confident. Graves is still down, so they do have that advantage. Um, but we do see uh, Columbia College progressing on that. Yeah, there is this, a cannon barrage coming out. It's a little bit too early on that one, as they didn't have the vision they needed for the Baron. And that is going to go over to University of Chicago, uncontested. And they are, like I said, in the driver's seat. 5K gold up. Dragon is going to be up in 30 seconds. They more than likely are going to be able to take that one because they can force these team fights and win them now. 
Yeah. And that, and I think that is that is the big kicker, right? Like they were winning the team fights before, but now they have Baron to help them push down those towers, like we were talking about. And that is exactly what you want if you are University of Chicago, right? Like you want to be able to have that Baron buff to push down these objectives. But then they also are going to have Baron buff to get the next Drake, which is another Infernal Drake. Yeah, and that's gonna... It's, it's at the point in this game where the Infernal Drake is essentially another item. You hit... It's not as effective early on, um, but at the 30-minute mark where you start building up these uh, uh, three to four items, it's essentially another item added to your arsenal and just pure damage. It's And that's the second uh, second Inferno Drake that they picked up. They, are, uh, they now have all the Drakes. Two Cloud, two Infernal. The next one is now going to be the Elder Drake. And it's, uh, you know, if it goes the way it's been going, it looks like it's going to go over to University of Chicago. The health bars are so huge on the side of uh, University of Chicago. There's really not much to break through them on the side of Columbia College. Yeah, I mean, Ghibli Studio is so huge on that Shin. As we can see during this fight, he's just taking so much damage and he doesn't care. Like, even we baby Seamus sat in the middle of the enemy team and was like, uh, yeah, sure. I mean, yeah, he has a yeah, he has a Zanius too. So if you wanted to use that, he could, but he doesn't even have to. Yeah, he can just turn into Ravenous Flock and heal up every almost everything that's being thrown at him. And he does have an exhaust as well. That's something we haven't pointed out or paid attention to too much either. You don't ever see Chicago; they have two exhausts. So if Hollywood goes in, Artemis followed up, or RJ follows up, they can exhaust both of them and mitigate so much damage. Artemis just got chunked here. There's the uh, cannon barrage having to come out just to clear a wave in that bot lane. And now it looks like University of Chicago, they're going to just push the waves as much as possible, rotate to the mid lane, empower the minions, burst down this mid lane inhibitor turret, and force their way onto the inhibitor. RJ goes down for the third time in this game, and now it looks like University of Chicago then may be looking to completely finish this game. Kavar, look at the shield on Kavar! That was more than his own health bar at that moment. And now we may be Sheamus with the Stand United coming in on him. That's Kavar picking up the kill on the in the end against Artemis. And again, that might be game. Mid lane inhibitor is down. They're just waiting for the minions to come in. They still have Baron. It's going to be empowered. Daisy is there to even pick up some of the turret uh, fodder here. We may with Sheamus. Almost goes down, but again, he does. He has the, the Zanyas. Just saved his life. Nice timing of the uh, of this of the uh, taunt. I'm sorry, taunt on to Misty Stumpy, and that is going to be game number one going over to University of Chicago. That is a huge surprise to me. Yeah, that actually was a little bit surprising, especially with all the hype that we've heard about Columbia College going into this game, and and kind of what we've seen of them so far. They've been very very dominant, but. I mean, Chicago made it look pretty simple. We did see them flounder a little bit in the macro game at the beginning, but they did so much better in the team fights than Columbia did that they were able to get ahead in gold, able to exert a little bit more pressure on the neutral objectives, and that helped them rotate around to the macro objectives a little bit better and start pushing down turrets, win fights, and then, you know, just kind of snowball from there like we saw. Yeah, and we're going to get set up for a game number two in this best of three series where Chicago actually leads right now against Columbia College. My name is Joshua Fekas Quest. I'm here with Brian. Going to give a quick shout out to our sponsors, a very brief one, uh, Twitch.tv, Azus, and of course, Band Gaming. Thank you for sponsoring us. Stick around. We'll be back on the Rift in game number two in just a moment.